Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. This is Shell for Cell, except it's a weird Shell for Cell, specifically because... Not a lot of stuff this week. Not a lot of stuff. Nowhere near the pile that I'm used to when I do Shell for Cell with you guys. So we are mixing in some extra well, content we always, or discussion. We've, we've, we've started doing more of a collection update. Yep. Like, what's going, what's going. Honestly, we haven't played anything that's going over the last week or two. This has been a slow week. And so, slow means we haven't played that many games. And we haven't games made that many have decisions played, about. We like. Yeah. So, it's kind of a push and shove. But we're going to be making hard decisions on Kickstarter. Because I've got a few deadlines coming up that matter <laughs> and Devin's here to break down whether or not I should or should not be backing some of these titles. Happy also, to do so. Also, next week check out their video as they go through Jesse's entire Kickstarter history and talk projects, about all of the poor we decision do that. It's making be fun. I'm with, excited that Jesse that. made. We're so. specifically going to drink an entire tub of eggnog and an entire bottle of bourbon in the process. Oh, oh yeah. my god. It'll be a really it's funny video, good. so check that out next week. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Alright, so let's talk about the few things that we had arrive <laughs> and the few things that have added or changed our collection. So first off, we got Dungeon Makers. This is going to be from, uh, I believe it is Fun. Uh, again, Fun right Tales. Where right. is it? Where right. are you? On the side. I oh, right there. oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Fundamental. I, was, I knew it was a fun. I was like, what's the, what's the- And what's I'll the... hold it because Devin has a- Fundamental what? Games. I don't have any shine issue. This is from, this is from a designer uh, and creator, Wes Woodbury, who I am friends with, little indie publisher, and this is his next project. So we just got a copy in. I'm excited to dive into it. I'm gonna be honest, and I've, I've, I've told him this, I believe, I don't love the, the outside style of the box That's so far, like, yeah. but the game sounds fun, and it sounds TG interesting. Tile Lane game of dungeon building for two players. Yeah, it sounds cool to me. Yeah. Uh, and so Tile I'm, Lane for two players is interesting. Yeah. I will hold it straight. <laughs> well, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like a dungeon building game. Is there any flavor text on there? Not flavor text. Flavor text. Um, what you guys are missing is you can read anything as flavor text. <laughs> Strategic tile placement, classic dungeon map, two-player game design with layers of player interaction, various point systems allowing for different tile paths mm. to victory. <laughs> Did you time that correctly? <laughs> Minions do Maybe. not stop in tunnels. Worth one point if you're... Either way. Uh, <laughs> it's Devin a made a massive yawn. I think people saw his uvula jingle back and forth as well as the tonsil screaming, Stop, Jesse, stop! Devin, slide back to the side. Slide. And let me ask you a very important question. Do I want these? Did you know I had a larger than average uvula? <laughs> that was not the question I was anticipating. Not what I was expecting. Did, uh, Scythe is not a new game, so why is this here? Scythe is not a new game. Did you game. buy these recently? Yeah. Metal Mechs. Because you have the legendary collection. I have a legendary collection, but a friend of mine, Matt Matt and I back in the day, when Quackaloop first started, he's the one that covered Scythe with me traditionally, and I played through all of Rise of Fenris with. Mm -hmm. I... He I, has the tendency to play it's, with it's, the it's, box it's in because front of him. Oh. It's because I'm wanting to and look so, at it. And then so the I'm glare. Yeah. You know so the... you're doing what I do to people now. Yeah, I'm on protecting him. Gotcha. the glare. Okay. So Matt and I were doing this series on Scythe before the pandemic happened. Okay. And both of us had purchased two sets of the Metal Mechs. And we were going to do a winner's takes all. Like, because they were like $50 mm -hmm. a piece, right? Because you well, need four sets for the You need four whole thing. sets for the game. Wow. We were going to do a winner's take, winner takes all on did the get, series that we were doing. Did and you get guess two what? sets? I had two sets, he had two and sets. And you won? No. You never got to the end, so you don't have two sets. The pandemic hit, and we and I moved away, and we stopped doing the whole series. So for the long, for the year and a half, You've had, I've had two metal mech sets. And is and this so, another two sets, or is yeah, this one? So I finally bucked up, I got my complete set, so Scythe is now complete. It has so all the expansions, all the extras. To get all of the amount to play with metal, you need two hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Why also do they sell them in twenty five percent of the time? Uh, because because no one wants to no, shell out two hundred dollars. So, at so once. a lot of people <laughs> they just want to sell out fifty dollars four times. Listen, a lot of people will buy these as designer pieces. They'll just buy to, them like, as first player uh, markers. They'll buy them as there's there's not actually to play them. with. Not actually to to play with or. If they only use one mech, right? They'll sub one out or two out. I, I've always wanted the full set. I've always mm -hmm. wanted the full roster. Are you gonna paint them? I don't. I'm not gonna paint them. I like playing with metal components. I would like to get this to the table. Let's we have metal. It. We have metal components with uh, Just scythe in general. Yeah. I've, have you ever I played? I've never played. Yeah. And that's why it's one of the only games I've played through the entire campaign of. Honestly, did you enjoy the campaign? I've heard Rise it's was a lot of fun. I did break the game at certain points, mm. which is what I like doing in <laughs> games. Oh yeah. Uh, there was one session where I followed storyline so precisely and had the broken character from following storyline that I think I ended it in about 30 minutes and everyone wow. else were screwed out of like like wow. I was, was able crazy. I was able to move around the map so efficiently 
within like three turns, I'd, I'd, I'd nearly completed the game. Wow. Which is a problem. That it's not is how a the problem. game. Is Another Stonemeyer Games product, Rolling Realms, which is historically. So much fun. Why, why is this here? Part of our core collection. Because this came in. Because this came in. Is this in. the Terra Mystica? This, no. No. This is the Rolling Realms Rolling Realms. <gasps> it's a Rolling Realms Rolling Realms? That's so this, funny. Can I open it? Uh, sure. Yeah, I haven't looked at it yet. So I, but I have decided because these little packs of cards cost $5. Yeah. And they already have another one released for, oh. uh, for his newest. <laughs> it's got a spot for, for his ripping. newest game. The, the pirate game, remember? <laughs> Libertalia. Yeah, Libertalia. Yeah. But here's the, here's the issue I have. By the way, you're opening that and like, I usually save the package. Yeah. Uh, See, he's got the Terra Mystica package in here. And man, he just destroyed that. <laughs> Okay, we'll put Why it. Why do you keep the package? I don't know. I'm weird. I like knowing what expansions Very I have. You should let me know that before. No, it's it's easier to look through the expansions oh. that way and know what you have because he keeps releasing them for every new title. Rolling it's, realms, rolling realms. So so, so rolling realms is such a fantastic game. It's one of my favorite rolling rights by far. But here's the thing: little expansion packs like these cost five dollars. Mm -hmm. Guess how much it costs to ship it to us? Uh, seven. To ten. Yeah, it's well, it's 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 five to ten, depending on yeah. like what time and what shipping you're yep. using and whatnot. So I've decided that I'm only going to purchase these in sets of like three or four. So that I'm going to wait. Sense. I'm going to wait for more to come out. But we did just get this single set. I got it when I got the scythe metal max, mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited to be adding another. This needs to get organized. Scenario I'm to rolling very, realms. Very anxious. So my question for that though is my favorite part of roll. I've really enjoyed rolling realms. My favorite part of doing it is solo though. Um, we is the solo puzzle. Did done they it. are they coming out with stuff to add in those right now, to the mini right golf? Right now, those don't integrate to the mini golf. However, I could see them doing a solo expanded set or something to pull all of those into mini golf because I would really like that as well. Just do it like on a yearly basis as they can. Why do you keep opening? Things? Because I have to show this to you guys because I think this is just beautiful. So okay. I, I brought this. I met Connor at. Uh, gamma and I brought this now, with me. I have had a prototype version of this, but not a closer to production copy. Right? Oh, this like, is this the is game you were showing bit... me that each person looks at it from a different side yeah. and has to mm -hmm. make a puzzle. This is a little mm -hmm. bit more of a finished Are you version. Setting it than up entirely have. right it, now. The box is the game. We understand that. Well, yeah. I, I thought it was cool. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, I'm curious now. So the entire box. Becomes the board game here with with uh, with blocking key. Oh, so the that's whole box becomes the game. So cool. And, I don't know, right? and what you're doing See, is you're sitting. <laughs> it's cool. And what you're doing is you're sitting around these different angles, and you each have your own perspective of the of the puzzle, the shape puzzle you're trying to solve. Yeah. These are chunky. They're they are heavy. I think they're like Holy clay cow. or something. So, so oh wow. You're, so you're Feels building really nice. you're building these out. And everyone's pattern is different based on what blocks have been placed where. And so you're trying to solve the puzzle according to your angle, while they're trying to solve the puzzle according to their angle. Mm -hmm. Which is just a unique, uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting kind of dynamic uh, spatial game. See? Oh, that's interesting. What you see is different than what Shira sees from this side. Or different from what the people see on their side. Yeah. So cool, right? Yeah, it's really yeah. a game. So we got the prototype copy back in for this. We're going to be doing some additional coverage for them. Um, I was a big fan of this game back when I played it. I played it for the first time at PAX two years ago. Oh, oh that's interesting. Like these squares packs. aren't even the same on all the sides. You see yeah. that? They're yep. different, different colors. colors yeah. Wow. Cool. Uh, the last thing we have to put a note of is Arc Nova. It's big. We got a blade this week. We got a blade. We have a recorded gameplay coming out. We have a first impressions. Yep. We're working on a right for you, wrong for you review, which should be out here in the next week or two. I need to like dive into it solo and a few other yeah. ways. Uh, Arc Nova is 100% joining our collection. Um, it was very even if enjoyable. Shira did not like it. Excuse me. I, I enjoyed it. I don't I think it can, It does over. not. It does not take its place of terraforming Mars. Not yet. Not yet. But it was a good game. <laughs> For and Devin I'm and I, we're we're very compelled. Well, yeah, because you guys. Are it was first. it was good. It was good. All right, let's go through. Let's actually go through the important part of this, though. Let's go through Kickstarters and let's One, talk are you about. Zoom in a bit? Uh, it's already zoomed in. Okay. You always just do that. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. You usually zoom that in a little bit. That's already zoomed in. Cool. It's been no, pre-zoomed. So wait, are we zooming? No, no, we're not zooming. No, we're gonna. That's been pre-zoomed actually. Okay. Oh. So Devin, no, don't move it. Well, let's let's talk through. <laughs> don't move it. Let's talk through what I'm currently backing. Okay. Uh, and let's have a, a conversation. Around. So like, you, you mean stuff that is still active? So so Amora already already closed. Earth that Under just Siege closed. just closed, which is very just exciting. The, the quest calendar now, Shira. There was an outrage of comments in the in the comment section saying you deserve the dice. Oh, 
<laughs> but I, I looked into this, and the set that you were trying to get was... They were selling you three I was different to get four sets of dice. Yes, they were selling you four different sets of dice. Did you understand that dice. I wanted all four? No, you, you just you said that. You specifically said you wanted the galaxy dice. The fourth set, the big yes. pointy one. Not the ones all before that. Correct. Okay, so what I'm hoping to do is in Pledge Manager to add only that set of dice and not pay for but I also three other the random metal dice. I wanted the case and the dice tray. Audience, okay. back me up here, because apparently when you guys come to my aid, Jesse, Jesse okay. changes pledges. All right, All right. so uh, Amora actually funded, which was very exciting. So the first thing that I have that I'm considering backing here is the Griffin, Griffin Saddlebag. Saddlebag. Now, if I start the RPG channel, no, uh, okay. then this- I Vetoed this one. Then this fits really well into it. This is so, book two of the Griffin Saddlebag. Now what this is, is- Do you have book one? I don't yet, yeah, I would get book one as <laughs> Well, over 400 pages. This is 500 magic items, new subclasses, playable races, 14 ready to play settings, nearly 100 new creatures. This is one of the most prolific. Is this for D and D? Yes, it's one of the most prolific indie creators in the D and D kind of RPG world. And they just, he comes out with these incredible sets of artwork and ideas and amazing items. And there's just so much. You can get the actual Griffin Saddlebag. Jesse, let's tell the audience, how many RPGs have you played this week? Why would it matter what I've played this week? <laughs> How many RPGs have you played this year? Three. Three? Yes. What RPGs so have you played I, this I year? So then I guess my question is, is, yes. is this stuff ever available not on Kickstarter? Definitely not. <laughs> I've never looked into that, but I'm assuming it's You've all never Kickstarter. Looked into that. It's all Kickstarter. Who looks into whether or not things are are or not Kickstarter? How, how, how long? So how, did they do a campaign for the first one? Um, yeah, pretty how, sure. How, how sure long they have. was the late she pledge? She does not know open much for. about this I, campaign, apparently. Uh, no idea, honestly. What's your current pledge level? No idea. He's only created two. A uh, dollar. Uh, Tell he's only created two, and the oh, okay. first one was a 200-page book. So. You know, now we're going to 400 pages. Okay. There are, there are, this has raised close to a million dollars. That's 700,000. I round up. That's a big <laughs> round up. That's a big round by the, up. By the end of this campaign, this will rate, have raised over a million dollars. We're 19 days left on a $700,000 I have campaign. a question. Is this like a logistical choice for Jesse if he wants to do RPG stuff? Or is this a logist, or is this so a FOMO choice for no, Jesse because he no, wishes he was doing not, RPG definitely stuff? Definitely not FOMO stuff. <laughs> So, so here's here's the here's the challenge. Since we're of course diving into the RPG world, Are this we? is one of those essential backs oh. that we need to support. I have a the question. Channel. Did you want to have this discussion on camera to have a better better argument? Yes. When more everyone when argument. everyone tells me that they want RPG content, that's how we. Justify. Justify it. If you get, so, hey, I, I would hey, say, I'll let you get it if you can get a hundred comments saying they want RPG. We don't get a hundred comments without. That. <laughs> That's probably what I said. Yeah. Uh, okay. The next thing that I know she encyclopedia with me on. back. Encyclopedia. Oh yeah, hardback. Are we? Back we're just a hundred percent. Everyone in. supports the decision. It's all it's in. Good. This it's is good. fantastic, and we got all to play. All in pledge here is a thousand dollars, Shira. Okay. No, it isn't. I was seeing a shit oh, play. <laughs> so, oh my did. gosh! No, it we isn't. played. We played museum last week. Have you played museum? I have it's by not. the same people. It was. I liked it. Jesse was not as fond of museum it. Museum was. Like, oh, look at the cute little upside down duck. <laughs> uh, this game, this game has, has left me wanting to play, play again. Oh. Well, that is true. That's why all three of us are saying pledge. Yes. Yeah, we're backing it at the yeah. seven at the naturalist pledge With, level. Is that what you got? Naturalist. Uh, that, that one is like a yeah. sec secondary. Yeah. No, I want all the upgraded components. No, that's that's, that's, that's a naturalist. Yep, yeah. yeah, we're hundred percent going in on this, this one is though. So much fun. Fantastic. Oh. Easy, game. easy pick. Easy decision. Let's go up a little bit. Tuberu. Tebaru, the bad karmas. You, so I know that you so, were compelled by the technology, maybe not the flagship that well, they launched no, it's, with. It's interesting. I actually, I, I first off, I love all the new stuff they're coming out with, right? Okay. More characters Sweet. to play with, more villains to fight against. Is this, are you talking about specifically Tebaru or yeah, bad No, the karmas. bad karmas. So okay. Tebaru is a core console system that yeah. a lot of other IPs have signed up to, yes. including like Vampire the Masquerade. Chapters? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and like quests and, uh, what is it? It's not quests and cans, it's, it, it's no. There's there's this other game that is a lot of AP, a Alter lot of middling quest? stuff. No, it's, some, it's something similar to that though. Uh, 
And, and so this is going to be running the AI behind some games that, that really, really would support this type of system well. Mm -hmm. Like Vampire Vampire Chapters, Chap you walk up to a zone. I cannot wait for that campaign. Like, think about this. You're playing on an app where you walk up to a zone, and it now, instead of you flipping through the book, the app just identifies that your character moved into a targetable zone where someone is now talking to you. Huh. How cool would that be? That's right? cool. Or running That's all the cool. like RPG stats from behind the scenes. So the bad karmas here is going to be something... Let me show you. Is going to be... <laughs> the bad karmas here is going to be a system that has you with a bunch of heroes fighting against a bunch of unique villains. And we just had the opportunity to fight against Gemini. I think there was refinement that was needed, Shira. Okay. I think there was refinement. Because I'm not sold on this system. I, did, I got to play that. I had to leave like three quarters of the way through yep. to get to work. But... I'm not sold on the system. I don't like electronic intervention in my board games. I think this is one of the best ways I've seen that hybrid happen, though. Do you I still like, have it? We still have it, yeah. I like Destinies. That's the hybrid that I kind of like yep. with the fact that we still have a board that we're flipping Holy over places. Holy poop. This is four times. Oh. Four, four <laughs> Core, core Pledge is the Saga Pledge, uh, which is 320 It's expensive, it's but you're getting the console, and you never have to rebuy the console from yeah. this point, right? You just have to download it. So this is zero. For me, I think I am in on this. How long does it have left? Uh, we've still got we've still got a little bit of time. Um, we're still looking at uh, 19 days to go. And it's fully pledged now. And I'm watching. I'm right watching now. as more content and stuff comes out. Yeah. But I I not only I think I'm in on this for two reasons. I think the game's fun, and I do want to see based off of the, the the two bosses that we've been able to fight how the other bosses do cool things. Because we had moments like how cool was the moment where you stumble into a portal and it just, just grabs you yeah. and throws you. Yeah. Like that was neat. Discovering the app. Does it? Responding I think to if you? the app can get more refinement, and if that if I could have had a little bit more of a teach and knew what to expect and what my cards did and yep. like keywords, I just kind of got thrown in there. Like hey, we'll just like pull, we'll just like lead you yeah. along in the do game. Do you think that by the time like between between funding, which it already has, mm -hmm. and between when you get it, do you think that the development of both the app and the game will make it I to think where it sells it for you even more? I think it's really solid right now, and I have a lot of faith in the product, especially because there's multiple companies that are investing in the Tebaru system as a, as a core concept, right? Fine. You know what? So Just get two. <laughs> Just get two. <laughs> Just send one your way. <laughs> <Send> one. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, so, that was of your own so, volition. I didn't say that. So I'm... I'm planning on backing this one, I'm pretty sure. Still 19 days to go, still time to play it a little bit more, but I'm leaning towards it for two reasons. One, because I think the game is fun, and I don't think the game's worth the cost of the entire core system, right? Yeah. However, I also think I want this in the future for the next games that are coming out. And so, why not support it at ground level now, if I have the ability to do so, help this come into market, and then hopefully more people will have it and enjoy it. Valid. Jurassic World. This is the brand new legacy game from Jurassic World. Uh, I don't feel... I, this is kind of like just an easy no for me. So this was an instant back for me. And then I watched Board Game Co.'s video, Breaking Down Projects. Mm -hmm. And he was he was strict enough on like the reality of where this is going to be available and the fact that you can get this for like probably $80 once the campaign's like already arrived to people and yeah. stuff like that. That I, I've actually, yeah. I've pulled it, my pledge back down to a dollar on this. It, it also just <laughs> like, this type of game to me seems like somewhat overproduced, somewhat pricey, and probably not going to be the gameplay that actually satisf satisfies or interests But me. I like legacy games a lot. I'm super There's so many legacy by them. games. Are there though? There's Are there so a many. lot of good legacy games? I have not encountered very many. I like Charterstone. That was like the first legacy game I played. Clank, I was, Clank? Clank I was Sorry, I, I guess. And Pandemic. Like, you're talking about campaign I, games. I, 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 There's legacy a and campaign. I'm talking about games that you I'm have to consistently like commit to so I'm talking, to actually get I'm talking the legacy full amount specifically of the where you're adding stickers, upgrading the map, or ripping yeah, cards changing up. Changing things. That's mid fun to me. Yeah. I I think that's valid. Um you know I, I think uh I think I've let's tired wait out until of some we, of the let's wait games. until it comes out. I'm glad you that's that's the Let, issue. I'm this glad was, you decreased your pledge to a dollar. Let's wait until it comes out and see it was an instant the back for me. I actually tend to leave so like on a pledge like this I'll leave my dollar there because yeah. I don't mind losing the dollar yeah. and having a track on it because I'll still get the updates, the emails, yeah. and I'll know when it's actually arriving to people, which yeah. is helpful, right? Yeah. Uh, Title Blades. Safe. Title Blades Two. I um, went all in on this. I am all in on this one. Shira's not convinced. She has not enjoyed this game as much. It's growing on me, but no, I'm not convinced on it yet. I I, I was originally just and, gonna do the deluxe board game and, and not know. the RPG, but then I was just. 
I don't know if it's because I don't have any context for Tidal Blades 1. It I isn't. am not attached to any of the characters. It isn't. Tidal Blades 1 would have not necessarily gotten you attached to the characters. You kind of have to do that, you know, by your, on your own on your own right. Um, because this is not this is very different from Tidal Blades 1. Tidal Blades 1 is a euro, you know, it's a it's a it's a dice building game. Right. But I like euros now. Yeah. I'm starting to like euros, so I'm curious if it would have enchanted me. <coughs> I um, have I have the first one. So yeah. if you guys come down and visit, I'd be happy to play it. Um, cuz I have I haven't played it yet. I yeah. just got it. You just got it. I got it from uh, one of the conventions um, from somebody that was selling it used. So I'm excited to jump into it. Nice. But I just think that I think what Mr. Cuttington, you know, the husband and wife team that they have there, mm -hmm. like, I, I, I was like, hey, you know, I have enough RPG content. I love Free League and pretty much everything yep. they do. So I have yep. enough RPG content. I don't need it. And I was like, you know what? Just, like, I just want to support what they're doing. Like, I think that, the you know, the role-playing game, so I, I know that uh, Shauna Germain was the designer for the mm -hmm. role-playing game, but just, like, the world-building and then Tim and Ben Eisner for the, for yeah. the board game. But just the world building that Mr. Cuttington has done, that their team has crafted, like, really pulls me in. And Do you get RPGs off the table? Off the shelf? <clears throat> um, yes, when I have the opportunity. So, I mean, like, the, the thing that I like, well, one of the things I like Free League for is because with their RPG worlds, they have, like, preset scenarios okay. to where it's like, I and like the players, do, yeah, it's easier to do a one shot. I like I already do D and D pretty much weekly with my wife, um, but uh, for the other stuff, I like to have those smaller snippet of scenarios to where you can do like a one or two session thing and have your stuff done. So um, Aries yes Expedition, no. <laughs> hard back. Uh, here's the thing, Alex pointed out that this will probably be. Just like it was before. At retail. In retail, possibly before Kickstarter get backers get it. And on top of that, it's all like you can buy the deluxe copy of this now for a better price than you could have got it on Kickstarter when you backed it before. This is not necessarily. Is the deluxe copy of Terraforming Mars still, a, the, not, a, still no, available? Of, of Ares, of Ares Expedition, yeah. I thought the deluxe copy of Ares was just specific can, to the Kickstarter. No, you can get your hands on it. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, from my side of things, I, I mean. Did you like Ares Expedition enough to 100% to want it? With these expansions, yes. Yeah. I didn't like it in the beginning. I I didn't want it in my collection from the beginning. It was only until I played it with these expansions and with the house rule of like making yeah. the cards actually meaningful choices, I had a really good time the last time I played it. I wanted it back. Yeah, so so I'm 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 split on whether or not I actually want to support this Kickstarter itself. Um, I, I don't love I don't love the way the Kickstarter is necessarily run. Like I was part of the people that in Terraforming Mars when those when the Terraforming Mars wave showed up, I didn't get my pledge for like a month and a half, two months after it had arrived in, in my local retail store. Yeah. Which for me was annoying, right? Yeah. Did the quality difference like do anything for you? Like the fact that it was like a little bit like cheaper materials or whatever in the retail? Didn't matter. It bothered you more that you just didn't get it and yeah. then they were in retail. Yeah. So. I think that's fair. Um, this is this is one that I'm kind of interested in. Are because you sure it's that's going to happen this time, though? In terms of our local, no, I'm not sure it's going to happen this time. There's no telling. But the question is, do we back it now, or do we are we just sure that we'll be able to get our hands on it later? The answer is, we will be able to get our hands on it no matter what. That's yeah. not the question. The question is, do we put our money behind the company now? Yeah, in a timely mm. fashion. That's that, or do we just wait till it's available and we buy it secondhand, or we buy it from a local retail store? There's some things like Tidal Blades. I'm not convinced I'm going to get all the resources and extras and bits and components from Tidal Blades by the time it arrives right. within a reasonable fashion without paying out my nose for it. Yeah. This, we're going to have access to this. Yeah. As long as we're getting it one day. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I agree with you. I would it's also probably the one way of engaging with Terraforming Mars that it maybe intrigues me the most because I think it's a shorter experience. Okay. So the other things that are still floaters right now. What are these? Uh, Habitats 9 Lives and Basketball. Those are you board just game played... tables, newest games. Yeah. You play Ghost of Christmas Fire though? These are their newest? Those are their newest. So... And I don't know anything about them, but... Yeah. I've enjoyed things like Ghost of Christmas you made so a much. I saw a comment on last week's video when you were talking about basketball being a basketball game, and someone's like, no, it's not a basketball game it's at a, all. It's like a team-building game or something. Some, something different. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for... So, okay, so I was wondering why the price of all three was so expensive. It's because the basketballs and the habitats are actually larger box yeah. experiences Yeah, those than are Ghost the size of, of Factory Funner. Okay. Yeah. 
And so yeah, we're we're planning on we're planning on going all on this one. They haven't disappointed me yet. Not all their games are right for me 100%, but so far their production quality combined with the quality of games they pull to market. Yeah. Really solid. Huh. So, no yeah, I mean th th this isn't one that I would instinctually have <laughs> been drawn to myself. I, I love the visuals it's of all the, three of those. The, past like, the artwork history is with, awesome. Like, the past positive history is the only thing that like initially yeah. drew us to it. I need to look into Monster Pit more. I, I like Elzra Games, uh, and I'm curious. Alex has not been convinced on this. No. Um, and so I need to maybe watch more videos on this. I've got six days left, um, so I'm, I'm still... I'm still hesitantly backing this one, mm. but I might I might need to take a closer look at it to see if it's what the is the me. game. It's a Euro. It's their first Euro that they're putting out, mm. uh, which for me is compelling. I love their artwork. They they put out These um, are the people who did catacombs, catacombs and Castles. Okay, um, which That's is a, a dexterity based game. game. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm on it because I support the publisher, but you know that doesn't necessarily mean that I close my pledge on it. How much have you put on that? Here's here's the question. <laughs> Are we? I saw that it? number. You saw how many? <laughs> I saw what he was back. But I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure that we're back. <laughs> I am. I really want. To. <laughs> so I really want to back this. I really do. I have a question. Do you want to back it because it's the most successful Kickstarter of all time? <laughs> Look at that head. Knife. Look at that excitement. Yes. Because I, 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 I do. Like, but I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to have to close my pledge on this. Like, have because you read any of the series? Never that these read are? any of them. No. <laughs> Just no, Close, stop no. your plans. And, and it has it has the the gift boxes that have like just, trinkets just and things from the world. No, and I can no. I can do like unboxing videos of all the gift boxes. We can start a whole series I, on Brandon oh, Sanderson. Only back that if you are doing it for the sake of content. So th there is so that no be, reason so, otherwise. So that one hundred percent would be part of the conversation. Yeah. Right. Is but is it so you get you get twelve I, gift boxes? I also just don't feel like it's get, necessarily enough adjacent to board games that people would would care. But it's the most successful Kickstarter <laughs> ever. This thing. Yeah, but you did a short video on it, and how successful was your short? Incredibly successful. It was. It was the most successful of all the shorts. Oh really? Yeah. It wasn't that successful. It only had a couple thousand views. No, it's but... at it's at three point five and still growing. It's the most successful of all the shorts. Mm. His name draws attention. It's got one hundred and forty five thousand backers. Thirty three and a half million. Thirty three and a half million. This has more attention on it than any single board game project ever. we've ever yeah. covered. Yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah. It, the question for me is, as a content creator, you get 12 gift boxes. Like, even if I don't know the lore and I just start slowly reading it... Here's my is requirement. Is the journey of going through this it, with 145,000 other people worth being part of this? Here's my requirement that obviously doesn't need to be followed. If you get this for the sake of just content, you at least have to start reading... One of the series that the books are based in. <laughs> I have at least one of the series. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've read the. I mean, how can I, I not? I've read the. <laughs> I've read the um, uh, Stormlight Archives. Yeah, uh, like Do Way you of like Kings. Them? I, I think they're fantastic books. I haven't so read great. any of the other. So you're series. backing this as well. No, I'll just <laughs> take the books from you when you realize you're never going to use them. That's actually a fair deal. He wants the gift boxes. We will send you the, the books. books. All right. So the thing that the whole point of it is for it. One, he just wants to see so little one, tidbits. I do want to read the books. Two, like an advent calendar. No, there's, there's there's three things for me. There's three things for me. I do want to read the books. I, I would like to know more about this author that's doing in, insane things yeah. in, in our industry. Well, I mean, he finished I, he finished the Wheel of Time series. Yeah. Which is one of the biggest ever by Robert Jordan, which was on Amazon Prime, which is terrible show um, but just the books are great um, and I mean so he finished that series he's got this series he, he is somewhat board game adjacent you he's know the reckoners and other other board games are f based off of his book his Mistborn I, th I think it's Mistborn series is very popular and has a lot of stuff like he has a lot of content that is like yeah. across his series interesting I just I can't justify it because I would need to read more of it, but I, if you're doing it for content, so, so there's three, makes sense. there's three things for me. There's three things for me here, and I, I've got six days left to decide. <laughs> and so the comments on here will influence that a bit too. But hundred dollars a day. It's <laughs> here's the thing. Here's here's the question: Is what a dozen videos on the content does that help justify it? Combined with that. Is he board game adjacent enough with things like the Reckoners, games that I actually want to cover? That there's a crossover on the Reckoners audience there, the and game. also that and you then, focus on the crowdfunding platform as yeah. And then the third thing is like, is it is it worth being part of 
this insanely successful Kickstarter. That's why I haven't heard of you because, up until this point, because mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I work in Kickstarter. Like, yeah. a lot of what we do is in this platform. Yeah. I think if you justify it from those reasons, it makes sense. Otherwise, Am I ever going to read all four novels? Literally. No. <laughs> no. Please, well, here's the thing. Please, I would please love please to read do. all four novels, but I have a pile of other books downstairs when it comes to, like, until moral development out, uh, and faith, and, and I'm diving into those This is more. moral once development. They, once they come out on audiobook, you'll have a higher chance of listening to yeah. them on road trips. Now, this sells this audiobook This sells versions. the audiobooks. Within that pledge, there's audiobooks. <laughs> there's audiobooks. <laughs> there better yeah. be audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I'm not. Uh, I'm the, not sure. The audio books I am, are uh, leaded with gold. <laughs> I am still. I'm still highly conflicted on this. But when it comes to the actual content, this when, the, when as stuff starts coming out, this would not cost us any money. I was kind of giving you crap about it, but kind of the more I think about it, there's sometimes more sense with this than necessarily like a large Kickstarter game that you're never going to play. Yeah. So, like, this, th there is value there. This would not cost us... If I did a video with each one of the little fan packs and stuff, Yeah. This, this YouTube would pay us back in terms of just ad revenue on the entire project. Yeah. So it's not, you know... Uh, Malaya, Lands of Legends. I st or Malia? Malia. Malia, Malia. Lands of Legends. Uh, super compelling game. I am backing it currently. Um, I want to finish playing through kind of another cycle of the prototype that we have. But that's kind of where, where I'm standing. Um, it's it's a adventure game. It's a, it's a dungeon crawl style adventure game with a lot of hidden riddles, clues, quest items. Like yeah. this is one of those games that does takes the idea of hiding numbers in like trees and artwork. Yeah. And when you randomly spot that number, you, you get, get to, to you get to turn to that story page in the book. Well, I also think the interesting thing about this one is, if I'm correct, this is the, the game that also heavily is investing in not just the stealth or combat side of things, but the exploration side yeah. on the board. High, highly um, explorative. It's the same concept that I was just describing. Yeah. But then it also has things where, like, the page you turn to may not be a classic dungeon crawler style, like just bash and, and push, right? Instead, it could be a riddle or a puzzle or a, 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 a set of codes codes that you then decipher yeah. later on. I think that's fun. It does a lot of puzzle making, which I think is really I neat. think games that have like been starting to do that, like Chronicles of Drunagor with yeah. their scenario yep. book that exactly. you pick through. I think I really enjoy that Sure is completely uh, disconnected. Narrative side of it. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, these are fun. It's fun, right? They're very so, fun. So we've already we've talked already about already talked about all of these <laughs> the past few episodes. And we haven't talked about it so, with Devin. Right, which is why I wanted Motor you guys City, talk about it. The designer of Fleet the Dice Game and Three, and Three Sisters. Sisters. You wanted to play Three Sisters with us while I, I would say yes. That's an easy yes. Easy, easy yes. yes. Solar 175. This is a legacy, not a campaign game, a legacy Euro game that, again... Who does this? Who does what? <laughs> that's that's uh, who does this? No, just like <laughs> who makes games? Who, 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 who plays games? Yeah. So lots um, of people. Who who did? No who, idea. Behind no this? idea who the publisher is. You don't know. Um. Is it not at the top? Is this still been a debate for us? It's probably weeks. it's probably under the name there. Yeah, right. Isn't it that name that oh, you just dear. clicked yeah, on? I'm pretty sure it was Cogito, the name. Ergo, meeple? Yeah. Those people. You're trying to see what else they've created? Wait, 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 wait. They, they made, they made Philosophia. Oh. Okay. Have That's you played Philosophia? Pass. That's their only pass I don't game. think I've heard of these people. So, I am compelled I love by the, the idea. I'm though. compelled I love sci -fi by stuff. the idea of a legacy style Euro game where you're developing space and like adding stickers to the board and like just well, changing If you want a legacy world. game, why don't you guys just get this and then you don't need the dinosaur, the dinosaur one. one? Yeah, that would make sense except he wants the dinosaurs. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean the dinosaur one will get, but we're not going to get it through Kickstarter. Okay. You know, uh, this one is one that we're still that may not be as available. How, how, how much have you researched the people's reviews and previews and stuff? None, man. Not a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bit. None, man. Yeah. Not a bit. That would Look be at that logic. Cool. Uh, no, I, I love the ships. I just love the miniatures. I just want shiny. Uh, I like legacy, man. I do. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? League what of Dungeoneers. League of Dungeoneers. <gasps> Hear me out. Is this more RPG? <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. No, it's not actually. I saw, <laughs> you were like, oh wait, no it's not. I saw Patrick Leader, I think, back this, which got my attention. Uh, this is a game that's in the old school dungeon crawl, like hero quest yeah, style. style. It looks like trash, bro. Like, look at this. Ugly, so that's why ugly you're old it? tiles. I hate the artwork. No, I'll tell you why I'm backing it. 
I think this game looks dumb. 400,000. So there's 3, something I'm missing. There's, some, there's something I'm missing here. By so yeah, a detailed, people are dumb. That's what you're missing. No. A they're detailed old school solo co-op dungeon crawl with heavy RPG elements, lots of dungeon tiles, monsters, loot, and replayability. It sounds cool. But what's the what's the distinguishing factor? Like you could apply that descriptor to No, no, I I understand that. Stuff. The distinguishing factor is it's raised almost half a million dollars. <laughs> on a campaign that I would have just written off. So yeah. they're doing, I haven't looked into the details of the campaign yet, but they're doing something right enough that I, I've backed it for a dollar. This is not a full yeah. pledge, but this is, is a, this I am paying OG attention this. the OG Warhammer quest replacement we've been looking for? Yes, yes it is. I mean, I love Warhammer, so that's, that's always, that's always an exciting thing. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's all. Have you seen any of the um, hubbub in the solo community oh, so about hubbub. Iron Helm and no. Ten Helm? No idea what Those, this is. It kind of vibes the same way for me of like it, it's going intentionally to look like an old school like yeah. point and click RPG adventure, but then they're doing it. Are, are, are those acrylics or are those just like cardboard standees? These are these are, are these standees? standees. Four hundred standees though. Yeah, it would be nice if they were acrylics. So yeah, well, I I just I feel like I've backed it for a dollar. I feel like there's something worth paying attention to here if so many people are in on this. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, I'm also kind of personally, I'm at the point where it's like there's such a glut of games like this. I, yes. That I just don't see like each one necessarily being able to like compete for shelf space with other ones. Like, like when Oathsworn comes in, like when Oathsworn, we, and every time we get a monthly update of all yep. the stuff with that, I yep. just get more and more excited. Like, I, I can't imagine getting that and Oathsworn and wanting and to play that over, over Oathsworn. Oathsworn. I hear. Luckily, they're not going to come in at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. The last the last things we have here oh, is... Oh, wait. I'm so excited. Uh, this that was, one looks gorgeous. This is Pachamama. It's, um, it's Minesweeper Advanced. Yeah. It's It's so a really great So much. it's from the people who did Pachamama? Yeah. No. It's much Pachamama, oh, but it's, it's remade. It's Minesweeper on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they have a great picture of him back when he had hair. Yeah. Um, they, um, so wait, this is so they, they re... No, no this is the Pachamama. Pachamama didn't um, actually um, fund. They pulled it back, and so this is You've it. played Pachamama, right? I have not. Oh, okay. You did you play? Get, uh, I was not here that weekend. Okay, uh, so it's Minesweeper. So you're trying to figure out the pattern, the quilt, and there's this whole, like, tech puzzle behind it yeah. um, when it comes to the little, like, circumference device you're using. It's really lovely, and this is one that I would even, like, I would even go so far. It's got 2,000 backers. I would go so far as to back like four copies of this game because it's going to be beloved as soon when as it arrives. People fe realize how good it's just it gonna, is. It's just going to be. It's yeah. one of the games that's going to well, sell just, for just like. Just back 20%. another one. Um, and, <laughs> Send it to you. Uh, I'll buy it. Okay. And so wait, how many days does that one have left? Because I, I, I didn't. Few. I didn't really four know. Days left. Four I didn't really left. know much about the other one. The last thing we have here is the unique jigsaw puzzle. People said that there's something at Target that is very Magic similar. Puzzles. Very similar to yeah. these. This is like a Where's Waldo of jigsaw with a lot of beautiful themes. But the cool thing for me is that as you do the puzzle, you open up envelopes and read little story bits, and the puzzle itself adapts and changes as you build it. So like, hmm. uh, so like this might change to that. This might change to that. This you is see? exploding. That's cool. Isn't that neat? And I thought it would be a really cute Is it just that. extra tiles? Is it extra yeah. pieces you swap out? Yeah. yeah, and you're reading the story to evolve the game as you, as you go. Do you uh, know, there are a thousand piece puzzles, so I told them that if he's getting them, he's committing to building them with me. I thought, I, cute, thousand, I thought it would be a cute day. Oh, I, I love thousand, puzzles. I can't do thousand piece puzzles. Or you could come do it. I will come do it. I, you guys don't have even a, have to be in the room. You could just leave the piece, room and give, give me a thousand, thousand piece, piece puzzle. puzzle that I, I will do it. So I think already. what we've concluded is is that... To take home with me? No, to build it while you're here in your spare time while you're sleeping. <laughs> um, while one thing that we didn't do this episode is we should have updated them on the Legos. You don't, you, we should have updated them. We have, we currently have, um... My son is here and he's an avid Lego fan. I also love Legos and Shira loves Legos. So and he's a monster when it comes to using Legos. <laughs> oh, he's a monster. Total monster. <laughs> he literally, within the sets, he opens bags before it's time to open them and puts I've together pieces and puts that. together pieces that don't belong with each other. The but anyways. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> Devin literally said, 
I would like my son to finish building the Lego set, then destroy it to do creative no. projects. And I did I started, say that, yes, but and then you I were destroyed started, it before we finished no, it. No, I took all the spare pieces and started Those were not spare pieces. Those were the ones I was Devin's about to Devin's son use. is currently building from um, The Marvel. Benatar spaceship Guardians and the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy use. Yeah, so he's building that, and I made a lot of progress this week on my... Um, Your Hogwarts, Hogwarts castle my is Hogwarts getting castle, huge. Awesome. It has, it's getting huge, and I also built a bouquet of flowers. The, so, the flowers might really. Nice. I might have liked the flowers more than the Hogwarts castle, just because like the flowers were so unexpe unexpected, and like yeah. they use them from pieces from yeah. other All sets. All different sets. It tells you what sets the pieces yeah. come from. It's Which really I thought cool. that was cool. Yeah. Either way, that's a video. That's that's been an update. It's longer on. than that's you thought the, it was going to be. No. Yeah, you're like this is going to be so, so short. If you're excited, while doing. if you're excited to watch Devin break down 225 <laughs> campaigns. <laughs> That we've done, that I've backed since I first got into the <laughs> hobby like five years ago. With was... eggnog and bourbon, mind you, because that's egg, in a... Eggnog and bourbon. Eggnog and bourbon. Eggnog and bourbon. Eggnog, eggnog and bourbon. Ooh. Catch them is... next week because they'll be here. Same time, same place. Not same time, though. Different time. It's not going to be next week. Eggnog uh, and bourbon. bourbon. See you next time. And eggnog. Eggnog and bourbon. Bourbon, bourbon, and eggnog. Eggnog the bourbon, got a bourbon, the eggnog, and we're gonna, 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 gonna bourbon that eggnog. Eggnog and bourbon, 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 and eggnog, and eggnog and bourbon, gotta drink it all up. Oh no, my cup is all empty, and now I'm gonna add more bourbon and eggnog from a cow. Eggnog and bourbon, bourbon, and eggnog, and it's not homemade, cause we had it in the freezer, but we're gonna keep on thawing it out, and we're gonna drink a whole bottle, cause we're very stout. Eggnog and bourbon, bourbon, bourbon and eggnog you'll never regret no matter how much you have cause it makes a good video and it makes Devin so happy and then just keeps on laughing like a clown and he's really really wow. big, really really big <laughs> laughing like a clown? Hey, if you watch this point, make sure you subscribe to <laughs> Devin Talks Tabletop. Oh my gosh. His video that he's my watching job. that His always His channel that he's watching. Bourbon and eggnog. Bourbon and eggnog. Eggnog and bourbon and bourbon and eggnog. <laughs> I'm done.